Hello, my name is Serena, and I'm 37 years old. A lot has happened in my life over the past few months, and I thought I would share my experience with you. I also want to give a word of caution. Always listen to your gut. Not all family members can be trusted, and it's better to be safe than sorry. My story begins when I met my husband, Danny. We both worked at the same company, albeit in different departments. We first crossed paths at a company celebration that brought all the departments together. Danny and I hit it off instantly, spending the entire event engrossed in conversation. We exchanged numbers at the end of the night, and soon after, we started dating. After three wonderful years together, we decided to get married. Our wedding day was the happiest day of my life. Danny and I had a great relationship. We rarely fought and had an unspoken understanding that kept us in sync. However, there was one issue in my otherwise perfect life. My mother-in-law, Willow. Willow was quite the character. While she could be pleasant, she also had moments of rudeness and would sometimes make snide remarks or even insult me outright. Thankfully, Danny always stood up for me, which I appreciated. The main problem with Willow was her forgetfulness. Whether it was due to an actual memory issue or something else, she constantly forgot things. Despite our suggestions to seek help, she refused, insisting she was fine. But I started noticing that her forgetfulness seemed selective, especially when it came to me. One incident involved my laptop. Willow borrowed it to browse Amazon and ended up ordering expensive items using my saved card information. When the order was placed, it was charged to my account. I was upset, but Danny managed to get her to pay me back. Another time, Danny and I were planning a short trip and needed someone to care for our cat. My friends were unavailable and my parents were out of town, so I reluctantly asked Willow. She agreed to come by once a day to feed and water the cat. When we returned, our house was infested with ants and my cat's food bowl was overflowing and crawling with them. My poor cat was itchy all over from the ants. Furious, Danny and I went to Willow's house. Welcome back. It's lovely to see you both, she said. Really, what did you do? I asked, unable to hide my anger. I asked you to do one thing, Mom. Why didn't you take care of the cat? What are you talking about? I did. I filled the bowls with food and water. Yeah, you overfilled them, and now the house is crawling with ants. The cat couldn't eat or drink because of them. Did you even go over every day like I asked? I went over the first day after you left and filled the bowls really well. I figured if I put a lot of food and water, the cat would be fine for a while. Mom, that's not how it works, and you know it. Pardon me for not knowing how to take care of pets. You know I hate them. So you only went over one day? Yeah, I forgot about the cat after that. If you knew you couldn't take care of the cat, why didn't you just tell me? I wouldn't have asked you. Look, is the cat alive? Yes, that's all that matters. That was a very crappy thing for you to do. I need you to apologize to Serena. Sorry, Serena. I was really, really upset about how casually Willow treated the whole situation. Even after she apologized, she didn't seem remorseful. I walked away because I didn't trust myself not to explode at her. I was fuming, and seeing her act like it was no big deal made me want to scream. Danny followed me out and apologized on his mother's behalf, but I wouldn't let him. He had nothing to do with her actions. We got the ant infestation taken care of, and a vet visit later, my cat was fine. I'm sharing this story because in hindsight, I should have recognized the signs of Willow's callousness and carelessness. If I had stood up to her then, I could have avoided a lot of pain later on. About a year after the cat incident, I got pregnant with my son Eric. The pregnancy was tough, with all the worst symptoms. To make things worse, I went into labor early, and Eric was born prematurely. I couldn't hold him for two weeks. Those two weeks were incredibly hard on Danny and me. When I finally held my son, I knew I could never let anything bad happen to him. Danny felt the same way, and we decided not to let anyone from our families or friends meet our baby immediately. We wanted some family bonding time and to protect Eric during his most vulnerable months. I took time off work to care for Eric. Danny and I decided it was best for me to stop working until I recovered and Eric was older. Thankfully, I didn't have to quit my job as I was given a year's maternity leave and the ability to work from home. Three years passed quickly. Eric was growing well and adored by everyone in our lives. But those three years were always busy with work or taking care of Eric. Danny and I realized we hadn't spent any real time together, so we decided to go on a date one weekend. Danny mentioned it to Willow, and she insisted on babysitting for us. 
Despite a gut feeling not to let her, we agreed after a small discussion. Our date was great, but when we returned to Willow's place, her car was not in the driveway. Alarm bells rang in my head. Danny and I tried to remain calm, but there was no answer when we rang the doorbell. Panicking, we used a spare key to get in. Eric was lying in bed, crying. I picked him up, furious. Danny searched the house but couldn't find Willow. Willow returned ten minutes later. I angrily confronted her. Where the hell were you? Oh, I got a call from a friend in town and went out for coffee. So you just left Eric here. Well, what did you expect me to do? Carry the kid with me? Yes, or don't go at all. It's irresponsible to leave a baby alone. First of all, that's stupid. It would have been annoying to deal with a crying baby while catching up with a friend. Secondly, the house was a mess and I didn't want my friend to see that. Are you serious right now? How can you treat this so casually? Look, I made sure Eric was asleep before I left. I didn't think I'd be out so long, but I lost track of time. You guys are new parents, so I get the freak out, but there's no reason to worry so much. Kids are tougher than you think. Just shut up. I never want you around Eric again. You can't do that. Danny, say something. You can't let her keep me from my grandson. I'm just disgusted with how casually you're talking about this. Serena's right, and I support her decision. I don't want you near our son anytime soon. For the next three years, I didn't let Willow come near our family. Just the thought of her made my blood boil. She tried to reach out many times, but I ignored her. Danny was on my side, even though I knew he didn't like not talking to his mom. I told him he was free to talk to and visit her. I just didn't want her near Eric or me. Danny spoke to her every other weekend, and that was the extent of our involvement with Willow. One day, Danny told me he had something to discuss with me. There's something I need to discuss with you. Danny began. Oh, what does she want? I replied, already feeling my anger simmering. She keeps apologizing for what she did to Eric three years ago. Why is she suddenly apologizing now? She said she wants to see her grandson again. Absolutely not. That's exactly what I told her. But then she went on about how she's getting old and doesn't want to spend the rest of her life estranged from her son and grandson. That's a fate she chose for herself. I know, but you can't possibly be considering letting her back into our lives. She just seems so apologetic. Yeah, probably because she has something more devious in mind. I doubt that. I know you're still upset about what happened, but she did put our son's life in danger. I'm sorry, but I don't want someone who showed no care for my son in his life. He deserves better than that. I completely agree. All I'm suggesting is that we slowly reintroduce her into his life. No, Danny. Don't be so stubborn. I'm not suggesting we let her be with him unsupervised again. I'm saying we let her see him. She has been apologizing like crazy recently, and she really does seem remorseful. Fine, she can meet him, but only when I'm there. She can't touch him unless he wants her to, and she has to respect all the boundaries we set. If she makes a fuss, her visitation rights are revoked. That's fair. I'll tell her she can meet him next weekend. Even though I did want it, I allow Willow back into our lives. She became a loving grandparent to Eric. She complained about the boundaries we set, but she never violated them. Slowly, she and Eric developed a good bond, and we began seeing her once a week for family dinners. She would spoil Eric with gifts and plan family trips so he could have a good time, always ensuring Danny and I were involved. She kept this up for the next three years, and I slowly believed she had changed. Then one day, she came over with something important to ask. I need to ask you guys something, she began. What is it, Mom? Danny asked. I was thinking that Eric and I haven't really spent much time together recently. Thanks to Serena, I miss a lot of time with him. You were a danger to him. Of course, I wouldn't let you be around him. I left him unsupervised once, Serena. Yes, you left him alone at home to go out for coffee with your friend. How could I ever trust you to watch my son again? Okay, Mom, what is it that you wanted to ask us? I wanted to ask if I could take Eric to the zoo this weekend. What? Why? I asked, shocked. Eric keeps talking about how much he loves giraffes, and I thought I could take him to see some. Mom, we just told you why we don't want you to have a long time with Eric. I know, and I'm really sorry for what I did. I hate that I did that to him. I just want to prove to both of you that I've become better. So you want to take him to the zoo? That's a two-hour drive away. I know it's a big ask, but I promise to bring Eric back. You can go, but only if we come along, I said firmly. No, I want some alone time to bond with him. Absolutely not. 
How long will you keep punishing me for something I did six years ago? I've been good so far and have never hurt Eric. Please. You know what, Mom? Why don't you give Serena and me some time to talk about it? We'll get back to you on that. Danny intervened. I didn't want Eric to go somewhere far alone with Willow, but Danny was sure she had changed. She had been a good grandmother for the past few years so much so that she was Eric's favorite. We asked Eric if he wanted to go to the zoo with Willow, and he excitedly said yes. Against my better judgment, I told Willow she could take him. Eric was excited to go on the trip with his grandma, but I was anxious. I asked Willow when they'd be back, and she promised by 4 o'clock p.m. I spent the day in a worried mess. When 4 o'clock p.m. came, Eric wasn't home. I waited another hour, thinking maybe they were stuck in traffic. Another hour passed, and they still weren't home. Danny suggested they might have stopped for dinner, but when they still didn't return, I called Willow. Willow, where are you? I'm at home. All right, and where's Eric? You left with him this morning, and it's 6 o'clock p.m. now. Oh, right. I think I forgot him at the zoo. I guess I also forgot to tell you. What do you mean you forgot him at the zoo? One minute he was holding my hand, and the next he wasn't. I didn't really pay attention because I was overheating. I left the zoo when it got too hot for me and realized halfway home that Eric wasn't in the car. What the actual hell is wrong with you? How could you not immediately call me or the cops? I screamed into the phone. Relax, it's not that big of a deal. The zoo is open until 8 o'clock p.m. If you leave right now, you'll get there in time to bring him back, Willow responded, sounding disturbingly nonchalant. How are you being so calm about this? He's just a child. He's old enough to know where to go if he's lost. He'll be fine, just go collect him. I'm going to make sure you regret doing this. I hung up the phone, my hands trembling with fear and anger. Danny and I drove as fast as we could to the zoo. He kept apologizing for convincing me to let Willow take Eric, but I knew I should have been smarter about the decision. It was only natural to trust someone who was supposed to be family. On the way to the zoo, I managed to get in contact with the management. They informed me that Eric was okay sitting in the security room. I told them we were on our way, and they assured me he was safe and would be there when we arrived. When we got to the zoo, it had closed, but the security was waiting for us. They led us to Eric, who began crying as soon as he saw us. He clung to us for a good five minutes, refusing to let go. The security guards informed us that he had cried for hours until he finally went silent. Danny and I tried to ask him questions, but he wouldn't talk. He was still scared and wouldn't stop crying. On the drive back home, I sat in the back with him. My heart itched for him, and I knew I needed to put Willow in her place. I told Danny that I wanted to get the cops involved, and he agreed. We called the police and reported everything Willow had done. They said they'd bring her in and needed Danny and me to make statements. An hour later, Willow called me. Why are there cops at my door? She demanded. I told you it'd make you regret it, I replied coldly. It wasn't a big deal. You got the police involved in this? You put my child's life in danger. Why wouldn't I get the law involved? You got him back, didn't you? I was only trying to get back at you for keeping him away from me for so long. It's not that deep. So you decided to traumatize my child for some petty revenge. The kid will get over it. You need to stop coddling him. This is why men in this generation are so sensitive. You need to teach your kid to be a man. My child is a child. His gender doesn't matter. He's expressing how scared he was when you abandoned him in a crowded place hours away from home. Get the cops away from here now. They won't stop banging on my door. What would you have done if Eric got injured or kidnapped? Would you be this nonchalant? He's fine. Stop talking about hypotheticals. You deserve jail time. I will press charges, and there's nothing you can do about it. Goodbye, Willow. After that, Danny, Eric, and I were called to the police station to give our statements. Danny and I both recounted instances of Willow being careless and endangering Eric. Then the cops asked Eric to tell them what happened. He was afraid, but I managed to calm him down. One of the officers offered him a donut, which helped him relax a bit. He didn't talk for a while, still processing everything. The police let us take our time. Danny and I engaged Eric's attention, trying to make him feel safe. Finally, Eric opened up and told us and the police that Willow had left him at the zoo in front of the lion enclosure. She had told him she had a surprise and made him cover his eyes and count to ten. When he opened his eyes, she was gone, and she never came back for him. 
Thankfully, he found security who kept him safe until we arrived. I was furious and asked the police to be serious about dealing with Willow. They assured me they would. Over the next few months, Danny and I attended several court trials against Willow. She was charged with child desertion and endangerment and was eventually sentenced to 10 years in jail. Willow looked devastated, but I felt a weight lifted off my shoulders. I no longer had to worry about my son being put in dangerous situations by her. Eric has been getting better. One of the first things Danny and I did after the incident was put him in therapy. It has been helping him a lot. Danny and I are slowly getting through this as well. I know it's been harder for Danny considering his own mother put his son's life in danger. It's slow progress, but we're learning to live normally again. Thank you for listening.